Those gusts will be around 35 to 45 miles an hour pretty much throughout the morning, throughout the afternoon, and even the evening, too. And even when we have our cold front come through that will provide us with our storms, it's still going to stay pretty windy throughout the area here. So that's why there is a very large wind advisory that goes from 7 in the morning until 10 o'clock tomorrow night for the counties that you see there in the tan color. And then, as you'd imagine, that does bring up our fire danger on the west side of the state. Red flag warnings are in effect from noon until midnight Saturday for basically the western about third or so of the state. We then also have our weak cold front that will be coming through. So obviously it's going to be windy throughout the entire day, but by the time we get to the afternoon and the evening, at that point we'll be watching the chance for a few isolated showers and storms. Marginal risk for severe weather here from the Storm Prediction Center. We're looking at winds up to 60 miles an hour, maybe a couple storms with some quarter sized hail. I'm not going to lie, I was locked in. I totally forgot about spring forward. Yeah. You saved me he on that. He had a look of had despair yeah, when he saw not, that graphic pop it up. It was not great, <laughs> nope. folks. It's like one thing Americans all agree on. We want to just get that thing <laughs> locked on DST and then never change it again. It could unite us all. Yeah, you know? really the can. one thing to unite us all. Yeah, <laughs> we'll be right back. But as we head into our Sunday, we've got a dry line that'll be setting up here across the Panhandles, and there might be a few storms that are able to develop along and to the east of the dry line. We think there's better forcing for more severe weather up more into Kansas and Nebraska, so there's more of a severe threat there. But even still, for us, there might be a couple stronger storms that might be able to form for us here Sunday evening. And then we've got a dry forecast for our Monday, but then on Tuesday, the dry line is still in place there, and we could be looking at more opportunities opportunities for some storms. We've got a number of supercell thunderstorms that are out there kind of moving slowly off to the east and there is a severe thunderstorm watch in that zone that does go until nine o'clock. Again, Calumet, you're going to be looking at that thing to probably be passing very close by and most likely just to your north. So again, still make sure that you are in your shelter now at this point too, as again, it is going to be passing very, very close to you. I'm meteorologist Jack Griffin back here at the Oklahoma City Auto Show. We were obviously looking at some classic cars earlier. There's not just cars here. In fact, we've got some adorable puppies. I'm joined right now with Rose Grimm of Second Chance Animal Rescue. And Rose, uh, who do we have right here? Oh, this is Ben De La Cruz. Oh, my gosh. And how many puppies do we have in our little, our little enclosure right here? Well, we have six about right now, but we've actually had 15 adoptions so far. It's this one here that's by Watonga within Blaine County there. We've got uh, the potential there for two and a half inch sized hail. So tennis ball sized hail potential with this storm here that's just off to the west of the Watonga area, moving very slowly to the east, but it is starting to turn a little bit more to the right. That's a little bit concerning here for us as that sometimes can increase that tornadic potential. You've got a huge hail core here and and uh, we'd be likely looking at that to be coming in on our radar product there of three inch pluses based on that uh, based on that color table there. And in terms of velocity, we can see that there is rotation again. These are supercells, so there is obviously rotation with a supercell, but we're watching that one really closely here. That's our biggest storm that we do have. But as you can see, we've got a lot of damage on their property. Uh, they've got about five acres here. We have a lot of very old growth trees that have uh, unfortunately come down. The tornado did pass right through this grove here. A lot of our tornado warnings that we have had today, they started off farther down in the southern part of the storm and then eventually kind of occluded as it wrapped around itself and eventually you get to more on the north end of things and then it goes away and then we get a new one that kind of comes back. Uh, like uh, our field meteorologist Mike Williams had said is that it uh, probably folded in on itself and we're probably just looking at uh, it just being very cyclical here. Our mild temperatures today will set the stage for what's going to be a very warm forecast here for the weekend. Area of high pressure will keep things nice and sunny here for us and bring in warm temperatures. In fact, will be in the low 80s for tomorrow and pretty close to 90 by the time we get to Sunday. One of the things we have to kind of watch out for will be tomorrow's winds. They'll be out of the southwest. They're a little breezy at times with gusts at around 35 miles an hour. But we're still, though, anticipating the chance for strong to severe storms for our Monday. So that's really what's going to be our next weather, weather maker now at this point. We're going to be watching kind of how the Pacific Northwest goes here for the course of our night tonight and tomorrow, but eventually we're going to see our low tracking off more to our north, but that's going to swing a dry line through the area here and also bring up our winds coming in out of the south, and that will set the stage here for what could be an active forecast as we head into our Monday afternoon, evening, and potentially nighttime hours if the storms form a little bit later. We'll talk more about the timing issues with our forecast coming up. The Storm Prediction Center still has their enhanced risk for severe weather. Again, the Storm Prediction Center can go only up to an enhanced risk this far out. And it's actually 
actually the same exact look that we had yesterday, and that's actually a pretty big theme here with our forecast here for today. Not much has really changed, which means that things still unfortunately look promising to support strong to severe storms by the time we get to Monday afternoon and going into the evening and nighttime hours. We still have our large trough, our large dip in the jet stream there off to our west. We still have an area of high pressure, the ridge off to our east, and we're also still expecting the winds along the bottom of the trough here to accelerate with the jet stream that's called our jet streak. And that's still expected to not only be in place here, but also still expected to be just as strong as what it looked like yesterday. So from the big picture, again, things look to be unfortunately favorable for not only the development of storms with the lift here that you'd get with a strong jet stream like this, but also for maintaining them as well. Then at the surface, we still have our dew points, which are still going to be well into the 60s here for us. And we're still going to see our well-defined dry line over the course of the afternoon and evening be somewhere either across western Oklahoma or in the panhandles. And that's going to be the big question is going to be where does that uh, dry line set up? If it's a little bit farther to the west, that would then delay our storms and then, then it would make it more of a nighttime chance for storms here for us. But if the dry line is closer to the border with Texas, that's going to be more of your typical late afternoon, early evening initiation with our storms. And they'll then move through over the course of the evening. Regardless of where, where the storms form or when they form, either in the west side of the state or farther west in the panhandle, they'll be able to take advantage of a lot of instability as well as the wind shear. The wind shear remains again good from a directional standpoint where you've got winds out of the south at the surface and then more out of the southwest higher up you go. And we also have the stronger winds associated with that jet streak too. So you also have not only the directional shear, but you have the wind shear and the speed shear as well. So with our faster solution here with our models, that's going to show that storms will form along the dry line across more of the southwest side of the state. And the faster solution potentially could bring more of those individual supercells through the central part of the state as we head into the evening hours here. And it wouldn't likely make the line of storms until it's likely past I-35. Again, as you'd imagine, all modes of severe weather would be possible large hail damaging winds and even some tornadoes with the early round of storms. If we go with a slower solution with our models, which is also possible, you're going to see that the storms will likely form a little bit farther off to the west. They will likely then make their line a little bit further to the west as we go more later on into the night for our Monday night. But we're still expecting the, there to be the chance for damaging winds, large hail and even some tornadoes, even if our storms are going to be a little later on in the evening. So th at this point on our Friday evening, what we have are basically the questions that we have to ask will be where do the storms form and when they do because as of right now severe weather looks to be very likely. I don't think that's really going to be much of a question for us here for our forecast on Monday. The, the dry line is going to really determine where the storms form and when they'd be coming through the metro and all modes of severe weather are possible regardless of when the storms form here. So we're pretty confident in that we just have to kind of get the location down. But for tonight, we've got temperatures that will be in the upper 50s. Use the weekend here while it's nice and quiet and sunny. Just kind of get yourself prepared. It doesn't really take much to be prepared, but you don't want to be scrambling in case things get a little hectic there on Monday. So storm watch alert day for Monday. We'll keep an eye on things here. Uh, but uh, like I said, it's pretty likely that we're going to see, you know, severe weather for our Monday. It's going to be when do we see it? Yeah, and who exactly? What neighborhood, right? And that can all change so quickly, as we all know. As we all know, yep, yep. So we'll be, we'll be on it here throughout the weekend and even on Monday morning itself. All right, thanks, Jack. Yeah, that velocity looks to be really good now with that one. So confirmed tornado on the ground. There's a tornado warning in your area. Do you know what to do? At school, you guys practice tornado drills. That way you know where to go in case there was a tornado warning. But if you're at home, there are three very good places to go to in case there is a tornado warning. Now these are going to depend based on how your house is. Maybe you live in an apartment, but you wanna make sure you get down to the lowest level possible here. Uh, obviously in Oklahoma, there aren't a lot of basements, but if you do have one, that's gonna be a good spot to go to. But for most of us, we're looking at bathrooms and closets as our best spots. We'll go to our bathroom first here. And you can see that within the bathroom, you don't have any windows. Typically bathrooms don't have very large windows or any at all. You also have multiple walls to protect you too from the outside. And you also have the tile as well as all the plumbing too. So the walls here are very reinforced. The tub also very strong too. So this is a great spot to go to if there was a tornado. Now obviously I grabbed a pillow here. You've got about on average 15 minutes until a tornado warning is issued to where it potentially could reach your location. So within that 15 minutes, maybe if you have the opportunity, grab something that can help to protect your head here. In case of the tub, you wanna make sure you get low into the tub and use the pillow to protect your head like that. 
but maybe the bathroom isn't exactly the best spot to go to in your house based on how it is. Maybe a closet is a little bit of a better opportunity. Again, a closet, not exactly looking at very many windows, probably no windows at all in your closet. Again, it's gonna have a lot in the way of uh, extra walls around you, so you've got a little bit more structure. And so it's again, a good place to keep you away from the glass as it could potentially be breaking here. But again, your bathroom and your closet most likely going to be the best spots to go to in case there's a tornado warning. However, if you have a safe, a safe room or a storm shelter, that's gonna be the best opportunity. In the case of a safe room, those are usually gonna be centrally located within your house. A lot of times you're gonna have some steel with that one as well, some concrete. Then you also have your storm shelter. Some of your storm shelters may be located in your backyard. In the case for me, mine is in my house here within my garage. And so again, for me, my storm shelter is gonna be my number one place. Most importantly, it's underground here. We've got also within my underground shelter, I already have my lantern in place. And I also have a little cooler here with some water bottles. But again, your shelter as well as your safe room, those are gonna be your best spots because they're reinforced with concrete, with metal, and in this case with the storm shelter, it's underground. But these are all gonna be great places to go to in case there's a potential tornado hitting your way. Your typical tornado warning has about 15 minutes of lead time. During that time, you wanna act quickly but calmly, and you might also try to grab a few of these items here as they potentially could be very helpful. First up, make sure you're wearing shoes or proper foot coverings. You wanna make sure you grab your wallet, any medication, your keys, grab your cell phone, hopefully it's charged up, a weather radio, in your safe spot, maybe you have even some bottles of water and some food. And lastly, don't forget your pets. So we have a confirmed tornado on the ground now, which is the first one that we have seen all evening so far. Um, and so we've got a confirmation that this one is on the ground. When severe weather strikes, every moment counts. And that's why here at Fox 25, we have to work hard and fast to provide you valuable and life-saving information. Right now, we're gonna take you behind the scenes and show you what happens when we receive an alert for severe weather. Hey, Elliot, looks like they're gonna issue a tornado warning for that uh, storm over uh, the metro here. There's a few steps that we have to take before getting important weather information out to you. We gather all the important maps, radar, and live video from our storm trackers and make sure they are ready for broadcast. I'm gonna be on links two then, let them know about links two. I'll be on that one and I'll get that set up here and we'll be good to go shortly. We visit this area known as Master Control. Hey guys, we got severe weather. We got a couple of tornado warnings out there. This is the room where shows and commercials from Fox 25 are sent from out of our building and into your TV at home. And the workers here need to know that our weather updates are about to become a priority. We then go to the control room. The director in this room pulls up the cameras in our TV studio so that I can talk to you at home about upcoming storms. And with that all in place, it's now time to warn Oklahomans about the severe weather that's on the way. Good afternoon, I'm Chief Meteorologist Jack Gurfin here with a severe weather update. Tornado warning is out here for the metro area. Please seek shelter as fast as you can. These storms are moving very, very quickly. As you can see, with all the moving parts in the Storm Watch Weather Center, we can still get crucial information out to you in a matter of seconds. Because at Fox 25 Stormwatch, your safety is what's most important when severe weather strikes. 